Welcome back. You may not know it, but one of the world's longest running animal studies has been happening right here in our backyard. Tonight, ABC Action News reporter Michael Paluska hits the water to get an up close look at researchers tack dolphins in Sarasota Bay. We're getting an amazing up close look with the dolphin research program team. Randy Wells here has been tracking one dolphin just in Sarasota Bay for more than 50 years. So what we're going to try to do is maneuver alongside the animal so we get a perpendicular image of the dorsal fin. With eyes locked on the horizon, the team scans for the 170 bottlenose dolphins that live in Sarasota Bay. Dolphins here have shown us that this really is their home across generations, across decades. We still have individuals that we've been seeing that I first identified back in the 1970s. Right here. To go out with the team and get this close, we needed federal approval. I've not picked them up yet, Jace. Pictures and video hard to capture. Come on, come on, come on. My gut tells me they're gonna keep traveling north towards the bridge, yeah, but I don't know. They may have something different in mind. Nine o'clock, three o'clock. And they have something different in mind. She's over to our right. I'm just guessing here, Jace. There was a disturbance at the surface that I did not see a dorsal fin. You want to pre-focus at that distance because that's the likely focal distance the next time they come up. Coming up. Over a million photos, hundreds of thousands of data records in the database. In 1970, the Sarasota Dolphin Research Program was born, co-founded by Dr. Randall Wells. Bottom temperature. 30.9. No other study in the world has collected this much background information on each resident dolphin. Who they're related to, how old they are, what sex they are, who's had a calf, what the status of that calf might be, and what kind of activity they're engaged in. The oldest one right now is 52. We're not sure she's still around. She hasn't been seen since May, but 52 would be the oldest. She's one I first met in August of 1975. And she's had eight calves, I believe. Sadly, when a dolphin isn't around anymore, it's likely because of something we did. A low estimate shows 25% of all dolphin deaths are because of humans. The number one problem, recreational fishing gear. Entanglement can be very dangerous for them, but they also get hooked by the gear or they ingest the gear. And some of it just injures them because they have very soft skin, but in many cases it's life-threatening or it ends up killing them. Forever chemicals and microplastics are also showing up inside dolphins and extreme heat takes a toll too. We see higher mortalities, higher death rates in the summertime than we see in the wintertime by a lot. And so how many of those mortalities are due to complications from excessive heat in their bodies? We don't know. There's a number of health issues that can come about from being in warm water and not being able to get rid of heat. Red tide events kill off hundreds of thousands of fish, and that turns dolphins into an alternative food source for another apex hunter, sharks. We also, with the 2018-2019 severe red tide, after that we saw it a record number of shark bites on our dolphins. We hypothesize that that may have been because of a loss of prey that the sharks would normally be eating. There they are, to our right, is that three o'clock? And that's why this research is so important. It takes us into the secret lives of dolphins and how they're just trying to survive and raise their young. What's something you want to solve that you haven't experienced yet with dolphins? What I really want to see is people caring more about the environment that the dolphins live in and creating a safer environment for the dolphins, which then in turn becomes a better environment for the people. On Sarasota Bay with photojournalist Reed Moeller, Michael Paluska, ABC Action News.